in this chapter, I want to go through how you can actually make an Azure virtual machine part of an availability set. So availability sets is an option available for your Azure VMs to provide high availability for your underlying infrastructure. So for example, if you have multiple Azure VMs that is being used to host an application, they can be made part of an availability set. Here you get a higher SLA if you have two or more VMs that are created within the same availability set. See, what happens is that each virtual machine that you spin up is being hosted on a physical server in the Azure data center. Now, if there's any hardware failure that causes the VM to not be available, or maybe there is an update that needs to be carried out on the underlying physical server that is hosting your Azure virtual machine. And during that time, there may be a reboot required of the physical server. During that time, also your Azure virtual machine will not be available. That just means that the application being hosted on your Azure VM will not be available. So what you can do is you can actually assign your Azure VM onto an availability set. The availability set actually consists of update domains and fault domains. So fault domains are basically used to protect against hardware level failures. And the update domains are used whenever an update is being made onto the underlying physical server. Now, when you create an Azure virtual machine, it's during the creation time that you have to mention that it needs to be part of an availability set. So here, if I go on to all resources and let me just hit on create. So let me just choose Windows Server 2019 data center. Yeah, if I go on to a resource group, yeah, if I quickly just give a virtual machine name. Now here, when it comes on to the availability options, we can choose an availability set. And here we need to choose either an existing availability set or we have to create a new availability set. Yeah, you can give a name for the availability set and then you can mention the fault domains and the update domains. So in Terraform now we have to do two things. Firstly is we need to ensure there's a resource for the creation of the availability set because this needs to be created first and then when we create the Azure virtual machine we have to ensure that it is made part of an availability set. Now, we can't make our existing Azure VM as part of an availability set. This can only be done during the creation of the Azure VM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy all of the resources. And then we'll change our configuration file and then we'll deploy our resources again. So let me just wait till this is complete. Once all the resources are destroyed, let me just clear the screen. So now let's make a change onto our Terraform configuration file. So the first thing is to create a resource based on an availability set. Here I'm giving the name of my availability set, the location and the resource group, the number of fault domains I want and the number of update domains. Now we need to reference the availability set during the creation of the Azure VM. So for the Azure virtual machine, I'm going on to that resource. Yeah, what we can do is we can specify the availability underscore set underscore ID. Yeah, I can choose the Azure RM availability set resource that I have. Let me also ensure to add this has a dependency. So I can just copy this and place it here. So the availability set needs to be in place first before we can deploy the Azure virtual machine. Let's go back onto the terminal. Let's create a plan. 
So here we are now getting an error. And why are we getting this error? So we deleted all our resources. But if you go on to line 24, so our data block actually depends upon the resource being in Azure. So the Terraform can actually find out the details about the subnet so that we can then get the subnet ID later on. So we need that when creating the network interface. We need the subnet ID. But because we have gone ahead and deleted now the Azure virtual network, we can't get the subnet details. So let's modify our configuration file even further to create a separate resource to make it much more simple. Let's create a subnet. So I'll delete this data block. Let me scroll down. In the Azure RF, let me just close this. So in the creation of the virtual network, let me delete the creation of the subnet here. And now let's create a new resource. So if I go on to the network section, this is in the documentation, I want to find now the details for creating a subnet within a network. So I'll scroll down. Let's go on to Azure RM subnet. Let's take this. So we don't need the rest of these details. This is more than enough. I'll just copy this. I'll place it here. Add the closing brackets. Yeah, let me give the name of subnet A. Let's give the resource group name, sorry. And then let me give the location. And here I need to give the name of my virtual network. So what we can do is we can take this resource, the resource type dot the resource name. So this will give us just the resource itself. We need to get the name. So here we need to access the property of the name. This will actually give us the name of the Azure virtual network that's going to get created. I can leave the address prefix as it is. So now that we have this has a separate resource, now what we can do is in the network interface is now using the data block. We can now use the subnet resource as it is. So here I'll take the subnet dot subnet A and now I can take the ID. So now in this configuration file, we are creating the subnet resource separately. Let's also ensure for the subnet resource to have a dependency on the virtual network. This is important. And here, so we have a dependency on the creation of the public IP address and the virtual network. But let's also ensure to have a dependency on the subnet as well. So I'll choose the subnet resource type. Let's take the name of our subnet here. Just to ensure that we have all of our dependencies in place. Let's go back onto the terminal. Let's clear the screen. Let's create a new plan. So we seem to have an issue with the availability set. So let's go on to line 73. So here I forgot to mention the ID property because we are only getting a reference to the entire object of the availability set. We need to get the ID. Let's save this. Now, just before I create a plan and apply the plan, what I've gone ahead and done is that for the resources such as my virtual network, I've added a dependency on the resource group even for my public IP address and if I scroll down, even for my availability set, this just ensures that the resource group is created first and then these resources because these are isolated resources. The Azure VM anyway is dependent on the availability set, but the availability set should have a dependency on the resource group. And once this is done, let's deploy our Terraform configuration file. 
So again, this might take around five minutes. Let's come back once this is complete. Now, once the deployment is complete, if I go on to all resources, here you can see you have the availability set in place if you go on to it. Here you can see app VM running as part of the availability set. So obviously I'm not going into too much details when it comes on to an availability set because here I'm just trying to show you how you can use Terraform to deploy a VM as part of an availability set.